we all have mentors in life. People who see something in us and help us to develop the skills that we have but may not know about. Um, on the article page, index page of my web page, you'll see a column that says critical issues. And if you scroll down to the middle of that list of a half a dozen, you'll find something called mentors and me. And these are 10 people that have had a profound effect upon my life and its development. Uh, the two that I'd like to speak about this evening um, <clears throat> are um, Brooks Oford and Louis Palmer. Brooks Oford had a candy store in Merchantville, New Jersey called Aunt Charlotte's. It's still there. Uh, and in the uh, run up to Christmas in 1952, I was asked to help him uh, work in the candy store. Why, we, we called him back then Bud, why Bud allowed me or even wanted me to work for him is beyond me. But asking a child to who was nine years old, almost 10, to work in a candy store was utopia. Um, what he had me do for probably a couple weeks was to put little um, pretzels on a conveyor belt that would coat them with chocolate. Um, child labor laws today and OSHA would not allow that. But Brooks saw something in me that said to him that he could trust me not to hurt myself or not to damage any of the equipment. That had a profound effect upon me. But as uh, Steve Jobs says, that was one of the dots. And it's only as we look back upon the series of dots in our life do we understand and connect them. At that time, I just thought it was a great opportunity to work in a candy store. Interestingly, a decade later, when I was a junior in college, I took a required class called the Arts. It was a 10-hour class. In other words, one-third of my junior year was sitting in an art history class. Five hours the first semester and five hours the second semester. And in those 10 hours, Louis Palmer would teach us uh, in, in three lectures during the week and then in two subsections. And we would start with the caves, the prehistoric cave drawings in Lasco um, and in uh, southern or northern Spain and go from the 17 17th, 18th century BCE to the modernist period today. Um, that was a golden opportunity for me to learn about the, the history of art for approximately 20,000 years. Um, most of my classmates, uh, including me, um, feared the class because it was a huge amount of time, a lot of effort about something which most of us knew very little. I got to be in the class. Uh, I, I didn't ace it. But at the end of the year, Louis called me and said, I want to talk to you in my office. And I went to his office and he sat me down and said, I want you to be my teaching assistant next year. That I did get. I did not understand why Bud would let me work in a candy store. I didn't appreciate that message that he was sending me. I just thought it was fun. But I did get it from Louis. I was old enough to realize that he saw something in me, even though I had gotten to be in the class, 
he saw something in me ability wise that would warrant his trusting me to teach the arts with him in my senior year. Half the kids that <laughs> became my students in these subsections, um, the subsections were 15, 20, 25 kids, um, half of the class were in my senior class. Um, and and the that teaching opportunity had a profound effect upon me. Uh, I'm teaching uh, still now in a college level. I have taught uh, classes in philosophy, world religion, um, and and um, ethics and those kinds of classes, uh, history. But I also have taught art history. And if I could teach art history till the day I die, I would be happy. I'd be delighted. Um, about three and a half years ago, just a little over three and a half years ago, um, I um, found that I had now a new uh, baby in, my, in the family of my grandchild. His name is Jack. And last year, last summer, I started to teach him art history. I give him pieces of paper that had uh, the uh, photograph of the painting. I'd explain the painting, name the painting, tell him the artist. And we do that about every other week when we're visiting with him. We go down every week to babysit for them for one day. And probably twice a month, I'll go through a folder, or actually it's a um, ring binder with pictures of famous paintings. I guarantee you he's the only three and a half going on four uh, child that can identify when he sees it uh, William Mallard Turner's The Fighting Timorer or Mark Chagall's Eye in the Village. He knows probably a half a dozen Van Goghs by name. He knows who Van Gogh was, why he painted the way he, I mean, he looks at Starry Night and Starry Night on the Run and says that's the other Starry Night. There's no child in the United States that can do that. Now I want to move from my experience to your experience. We all have golden opportunities to be mentors to others and we've all benefited for having mentors, mentors help us. And now what I have done in my life is to turn being the object of the mentor to becoming the mentor to those two children. Uh, Owen, who is uh, Jack's uh, younger brother, uh, just a couple weeks ago started to looking at some of the Van Gogh paintings that Jack knows very well. Owen's a couple years younger but he understands that these are things that are important to Jack and therefore they're going to be important to him. I want you to be able to think about those people who you come in contact with in life, whether they're toddlers or whether they are adult, that need mentoring. That you can see something in that child that that child or that adult may not have seen in themselves. I missed it with Bud Oakford. He let me work in his candy store. That was fine with me. I didn't care what he thought about me. I just was delighted at the opportunity. But I understood it a decade later when Louis asked me to teach. And that had a profound effect upon the rest of my life. I have no idea what mentoring Jack and Owen in the art history class is going to do for the rest of their lives. But I know that we can reach out to all people and help them, particularly the younger. Be a good mentor. You can change people that way. Hope you enjoy the article.